Hello pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean and today we're going to start the beginning of conic sections. So we're going to have three lessons on conic sections. Those three lessons will be parabolas, ellipses, and those ellipses will include circles, and then hyperbolas. So today we're going to focus just on parabolas, but I wanted to show you real quick the visual of why do we call these things conic sections? Because if you take a cone and you splice it in different ways, the shape that it creates is what we call conic sections. It would create either a circle, an ellipse, a parabola, or a hyperbola. Now I showed this picture here because it's a little bit easier to see what we're talking about, that it creates a parabola if you if you slice it that direction. If you slice it parallel to the base, it would be a circle. A little bit of an angle would be an ellipse. And then a hyperbola is actually straight up and down, so it's perpendicular to the base. That doesn't really show that very well, so I wanted to show this picture here uh, just to show what a hyperbola is. And plus, a hyperbola has two different uh, branches to it for a hyperbola, not just the one. Okay, so today's lesson, though, let's focus on these things, parabolas. So there's, there's a lot of familiarity you should already have with parabolas, but we're going to define it a little bit differently that you're not used to, most likely, unless you did this in Algebra 2. And that is, we've got a set of points x and y, and we're going to have those be equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point called the focus. Now, where are those? On your graph, this right here is the focus. So let's label that focus. And then this line down here is the directrix, if I can write clearly. That's the directrix. So a focus and a directrix. So all the points that are equidistant from the focus and directrix. Now I'm gonna show you that in just a minute here, how that works. Um, but let's keep going. The midpoint of the focus and the directrix, so right in between the focus and the directrix, right there, that thing is called the vertex. That's the one that you've already known. And then the line that goes through the vertex, oh, here, I'll write vertex, vertex, right there, that thing. And then this line that goes between the focus and the vertex, we call that the axis of symmetry. So axis oh watch i'm gonna do this axis of symmetry and then i'm gonna click on it and turn it this way because i can do that axis of symmetry there we go so something like that that's the axis of symmetry this line straight up and down all right so hopefully some of these terms are familiar probably the newest is going to be a focus and a directrix now let me show you what this equidistant thing means uh, with a little graph here so this is uh this is something on geogebra I'll put the link in the description of the video so you can come here and play around with this. This was made by uh, Terry Lee Lindenmuth, so thank you very much for making this. This is a kind of cool explanation. And this is what we're talking about where it's equidistant. So notice, as I drag a point on the parabola around, 4.09 is the distance to the focus. 4.09 is straight down to the directrix. So it's all points that are equidistant from the focus and the directrix. That's what a parabola makes, a parabola, how a parabola is created. And the cool thing here too, if I take the focus and drag it, you can see is the closer the focus is to the directrix, the steeper the parabola will be, and the further away, the flatter the parabola will be, the wider it will be. Okay, so you can play around with that. Again, the direct the uh, link is in the description if you wanted to see how that works. That helps define this first set. It's all the set of points that are equidistant from a directrix and a focus. All right, now let's do the orientation. So here we have in the form of uh, where an x is being squared, x minus h. h and k, that's just the vertex, right? The h, k. So we've done this a lot with other things that we've been practicing this year, where the h is with the x, and that's the x value, in this case, of the vertex. The k is the y value of the vertex, and you find it here with the y. It's always the opposite, so it's minus this value. So that value's opposite will be your h and k. All right, so now if a is positive, then the parabola is going to open up, and if a is negative, the parabola will open down. That's exactly what we've been doing for a year or two here with, with parabolas. You, you're used to that. What you're probably not as used to is when a parabola opens left or right. So when the y is being squared now, remember x being squared is what we're used to, now when the y is being squared, and it's in this form where it's x equals, well, with the h part, uh, then it creates a left or right parabola, so if a is positive, the parabola is going to open right, and if the a is negative, the parabola will open to the left. Notice also, as you're writing this down, that the h and k, it swapped with the, it stays with the x and y, right? So if I have x minus h here, 
and its width is squared, and now it's over here and it's not being squared, the h follows it. So it's the, whatever that value with the h is, excuse me, with the x, that h is the x value of the vertex. All right, so let's just get that written down and uh, a couple more things about this form that is very helpful, and that is that a, let's talk about a for a minute. a is equal to one over four p. Now this is another variable. This really makes helps us out though with some things about this graph. And that is that p is the distance from the vertex to the directrix. So from the vertex, here's our vertex, to the directrix, that value is p. It is also the distance from the vertex to the focus. So this distance right there is also p. That's really helpful. So if I can identify that the bottom of the fraction is 4p, I can then figure out what the value of p is and how far away that focus is. Also, the absolute value of 4p is the width of the parabola at the focus. We call this the focal width. It's how wide the parabola is at the focus. So the whole way across here, if I drew this line all the way across, that is 4p. I should say the absolute value of 4p. That's the focal width. Or in other words, this half of it is 2p and this half of it is 2p for a total of 4p. Now that's going to be really useful for us with, uh, with some graphs that we're going to do and how to sketch some of these things. Now, this is a cool thing. Just so you know, like if you think about a satellite dish, if you have like some cool satellite dish, I'm going to be a horrible drawing here. Okay, yeah. And then you had, you know how you have a receiver in the middle of the satellite dish and you have signals coming from outer space and they're coming towards a satellite dish? The satellite dish is actually a parabolic dish. And that little receiver, when it bounces, the rays come down from outer space and it bounces right at the receiver. The receiver is at the focus. So it actually has a lot of really cool um, real world applications, these parabolas, um, which if we had time, we'd do cool stuff in lessons with activities of cooking hot dogs on a parabolic tinfoil thing. It's really cool. I've done it with my kids. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let's go do some graphs here. And that is use the equation, blah, 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 to find the following. So first off, orientation. Does it open up, down, left, or right? So we identify which variable is being squared. X is being squared. So it's got to be up or down. And then this A is positive. Therefore, it opens up. Okay, that's quick and easy. Vertex. Uh, the vertex is at, it's what's with the x? Plus one, so the vertex is at negative one, comma. What's here with the y? A negative one, so that one's a positive one. Negative one, comma one. Let's plot that point. Negative one, one. There's our vertex. Focus. Okay, so the focus, we have to first use our value of a, which is one eighth. And we're going to say that that equals one over four p. Therefore, if I just flip this, these fractions and just say 8 equals 4p, then that tells me that the p value is a 2. The reason that's important is because that's how far away the focus is. So if this is the vertex, the value of p is up 2. So my focus is at negative 1, 3. Now, why did I move up and not down, left, or right? Because I knew the orientation was up. The focus has to be inside the parabola. All right, directrix will be the other way. So if P is a two, I'm gonna go down two and put a dashed line right down here. There's my dashed line, that's my directrix. And where is that directrix? That is a Y equals, what is that, negative one. Y equals negative one is the directrix. All right, what's the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is just gonna be straight up and down, connecting the vertex and the focus. Okay, right there. And that line is X equals, since it's a vertical line, X equals negative one. Now what's the focal width? The focal width is whatever 4p is. So it's the absolute value of 4p, which in this case, we already showed up here that 4p was 8. So it is 8. Now what that means is at the focus, it has a width of 8. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 this way. And 1, 2, 3, 4 this way. And then that allows us to sketch a basic shape of the graph. So here's my vertex, and I'm going to go out here it starts to curve up, and then out this way, it starts to curve up. There's our basic shape of the sketched graph of this parabola. Okay, so with all that information that we've just practiced one, I'm going to have you pause the video now. Go ahead and pause. You're going to try to do this whole thing on your own, just like we did the last problem, and then you can double-check your answers here.
And there's the answers. You can go through this. This is a parabola that's opening up to the left. Uh, the tricky part here, which is making sure you get the correct p value, that then will help you get, know where the directrix is, the axis of symmetry, focal width, all that type of stuff. Okay, so uh, check your answers there. And then let's move on to uh, coming up with an equation if you only have a graph. So the first thing is let's, we're trying to focus in on putting it in a standard form, not a standard form, but this form here. Uh, one of these two. So we identify for that graph, if it's opening to the left here, we're going to want the y to be squared because that's going to open left and the a we know is negative. All right, so let's, I'm going to just quickly write that part of it out. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. Now, what do we know? We know where the vertex is. It's at negative one five. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in that part. X plus one, because we're going to do the opposite. I do not know what my a is yet, but that's okay. I will get there. And then the k part was a five quantity squared. Okay, so that's just from the vertex. So this actually is the answer if I only knew what a is. How can you find a? Well, if we have one more point, in this case, negative five, three, then we've got enough information, right? We can plug in an x and a y and solve for a. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this coordinate point, negative five, three, and plug in a negative five into that x and a three into that y. And then let's uh, let's just plug in the rest here. So we've got a, I don't know that, oops. And then minus five, quantity square it. So now I've got negative four equals a. Three minus five is negative two, squared is four. Divide both sides by four, I get negative one equals a. Well, now that I know what a is, I can rewrite that line right there. Since uh, all I have to do is plug in the a equals a is a negative one. So I'll just put a little negative sign there. And then y minus five quantity squared. Okay, so that's all I had to do for this one. That is the answer right there. And that shows you we've got the correct vertex at negative one five. We've got an opening left. This is, this is the uh, equation for that problem. All right, last part of the lesson, and that is completing the square. I hope this is a review, and I'm just reminding you. If you do not know completing the square at all, this is just a very brief overview of it. I think it'll remind you of all the key points, um, but it's not, I, I'm kind of expecting that you've seen this before. So here's how it works. When you complete the square, you're going to focus in on a quadratic term that has to have a one in front, and then a linear term. So you have a quadratic with an, the variable being squared and a linear term with the variable to the first power. Once you have that, then completing the square is actually very simple. We're going to take the b and take half of it and square it. So half of b squared, when you add that to this binomial, you get this trinomial that becomes a perfect square, which is this x plus half of b quantity squared. Okay, so we add half of b squared, and that's going to let this factor out to x plus half of b times x plus half of b. All right, that might seem a little confusing. Let's try it out. So right here, I've got a um, quadratic term, a linear term. I'm going to add half of b squared. It's this part right here. I'm going to add half of that, which is five, squared is 25. And I have to balance the equation. If I do it to the left side, I need to do it to the right side. Now what that leaves me with is x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals y plus 25. And then this is a factorable, <laughs> I say that right? x plus five times x plus five, which equals y plus 25. Or in other words, normally I'm gonna skip this step. I won't write this all out because you can just go straight to x plus five quantity squared equals y plus 25. Okay, so now this allows us to identify, oh yeah, this thing is a parabola. We know it's opening up, but where's the vertex? The vertex is at negative five, negative 25. So this allows us to put it into the form that helps us quickly identify things. That's why completing the square is useful for this. Okay, let's do this one. So I have to, the, the y squared, the whatever variable is being squared has a one in front, so we're good to go. I'm going to take half of three, negative three, half of negative three, which is just negative three halves, and then square that, right? So that's what I'm adding to the right, and I'm adding to the left. Well, what's, the reason I did a fraction, because it's so much easier to, to square fractions, that's just nine-fourths, super easy, nine-fourths. All right, so now I get 
x plus 9 fourths equals, and now I'm going to go straight to the quantity being squared. So I know it's going to be this, x plus half of b, or in other words, y, because we're using a y here, plus half of b is just minus half of b. And now that's it, because we can see the vertex is at negative 9 fourths, comma, 3 halves. It's really quick there. All right, last one, and that is if this x is, has a number in front of it, we're going to divide everything by that number. We're going to divide both sides by 2. So there's an equal sign here, so I'm just dividing both sides by 2. And then that gives me x squared minus 8x equals a 1 half y plus 2. Now I can complete the square because I have the x squared term has a 1 in front. Half of 8 is negative 4. Square it, you get 16. So I'm going to add 16, not 6, 16 to both sides. That will then give me x minus 4 quantity squared, right? So I am skipping some steps now. This would become x minus 4 times x minus 4, and then I can just write x minus 4 quantity squared, equals 1 half y plus 18. Now this is almost done with uh, the form that we could identify some things with. Quantity squared equals, I need to pull out that 1 half here. So I make it 1 half times y plus 36. And then I would multiply both sides by 2 if I wanted to get it in the final form. Because remember, the a is supposed to be in front of the quantity squared. So if I multiplied both sides by 2, then it would be there. But you can see 4, negative 36, that's the vertex. Which is pretty tough to see from this. But you can get it pretty quickly with completing the square. Okay, last, exact pro last problem we got to do. We're, all we're doing is we're just using that skill real quick. So I'm going to write this down, y squared plus 6y. I'm going to bring the 8x and the 25 over to the other side, negative 8x minus 25. And all we're doing is we're trying to manipulate this equation by completing the square, and then we're going to put it in the form that we've been practicing with. So what is half of 6? It's 3. Square it, and you get 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So that gives me y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals negative 8x minus 16. And then this is just y plus 3 quantity squared equals, I need to pull that negative 8 out. So let's go negative 8 times x plus 2. Uh, and then we're almost done. I'm going to rewrite this up here because I know you may not have a lot of room. If I divide both sides by negative 8, so divide this side by negative 8, this side by negative 8. Then I get negative 1 8 times y plus 3 quantity squared equals x plus 2. So now I can see that uh, you can start identifying a bunch of things now. Like where's the vertex? Well, if I needed to, I could say well, the vertex is going to be at negative 2 comma negative 3. Which way does it open? It opens to the left because the y is being squared and you have a negative in front of it. Um, from there, you could figure out what the uh, where the focus is by identifying the 4p. Like all that stuff we've been practicing, now you could do it because you completed the square and put it in a form we can work with. Okay, that's everything. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson where we'll do some uh, ellipses and circles.